finally found you. Garfile, dinner has been ready for hours now. Head, 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 head. Garfield, you obese cab, I am talking to you. Oh, John, I didn't see your stinny butt come in. I was just watching my favorite film, Garfield Gets Real. Looks interesting. Can I watch? Help no John with paint the movie for pathetic losers like you. Now get your pathetic self into the kitchen and fix up some lasagna, knucklehead. Or else. Get he the help they have on my heart. What can you say about Garfield? Well, for one thing, he's only a multimedia sensation. Garfield started off as this little comic strip about a cartoonist and his fat cat, which slowly but surely ballooned into an all-encompassing media empire complete with merchandise, movies, TV shows, video games, and memes. I guess this could be because the creator of Garfield, Jim Davis, had a little bit of education in business. So when he saw that his little fat orange cat was making dollar signs, he knew what he had to do to start cashing in. How did he do this? Design. It's all in the design. Who wouldn't love a lazy, fat, orange cat? Look at him. He's, he's plush, and he's round, and he's just so wonderfully inoffensive. That's because Garfield never commented on society or politics or anything. It only focused on a lonely man and his fat cat and his dumb dog sitting around all day, every day, doing nothing over and over and over again. And that's why everybody loves Garfield, right? It's so exciting and charming and so much going on, right? Yeah, let's be honest. Garfield sucks. Not to be racist or anything, but Garfield. <laughs> like, it's so obvious nowadays. Either the jokes aren't funny, or they just make no sense. The whole comic strip is built around, like, six of Garfield's character traits. So basically, the focus of every strip will be on Mondays, or food, or you're kicking the dog, or you're sleeping, or you're bullying John. Multiply that by 44 years of daily comic strips, and what you've got is a dead horse. But I didn't always think that Garfield sucks. I hate to admit this, and trust me, I hate to admit this, but back in the day, I was a big fan of Garfield. Yeah, this is one of those stories. Picture this, a pudgy little miniature me walking around reading the daily Garfield comic strip, reading the books, and watching the movies, and decorating my room with all the merchandise. Like this thing that's been on my shelf for 11 years. It's a giant Pez dispenser. And it's hideous, and it talks. I don't even know where you'd find the Pez bricks big enough to fill it up. Maybe dispense soap or something. I also remember always visiting Garfield's official website as a kid. A lot. So recently I decided to check out Garfield.com again and amazingly nothing has really changed there in the last 10 years. I even clicked on the games tab just this morning, and I was so surprised to find that the top advertised game on the page was one that I distinctly remember playing on my dad's old Windows XP computer a decade ago. The game sucks by the way, but 
I've always liked the little real-life pictures they have of the donuts with the Garfield-themed packaging. I always thought it was pretty cool. It was on Garfield.com that I first heard about Garfield's first 3D animated direct-to-DVD film, Garfield Gets Real. So of course I was excited for it, right? I mean, that was a big deal for me, I guess? Anyways, so Garfield Real came out in 2007, and my mom immediately bought it for me. I got the DVD, and I just remember watching the stupid thing over and over again. And I don't really know why, to be honest, because even back in the day, I don't remember considering it to be a very good movie. Obviously, it's pretty ugly animation from 2007, and the voice acting is pretty subpar or terrible. But, okay, maybe it's not as bad as I remember. Because, after all, Jim Davis himself worked for 11 years writing the script. As a kid, I remember being very confused about the name of the movie. Garfield Gets Real could mean a lot of things. Maybe it was just a reference to the fact that Garfield was now in 3D, and I guess that looks a little more lifelike than 2D? Or maybe it could have referred to something more specific in the movie, like maybe Garfield will go from a 3D world into a CGI cat in a live action, kind of like those terrible Bill Murray movies. But what the name actually means is a lot more convoluted. Basically, this movie has two separate worlds, the real world and the comic world. In the comic world, the characters of comic strips get together at a studio where they will act out the daily comic strips, and then those actions and their dialogue are somehow captured and turned into pictures and turned into comic strips, which are then sent to newspapers in the real world. And then the characters all get together in this big theater and they go watch people as they're reading the comics, which is basically done as if every newspaper was a camera through which they can spy on people on their giant screen. Now, in this universe, the screen is this ultimate bridge between the two realities. What gets confusing about this, though, is that the real world is still designed exactly the same way as the comic world, complete with the cartoonishly muscular dogs and the slapstick physics. Personally, I thought it would be more interesting if they went for a bigger contrast between the two worlds. Like, maybe make the dogs look more like this real-life muscular dog instead of the cartoony ones. And in this scene, when a bunch of chihuahuas rain from the sky, hit the ground, and leave craters, well, that's not realistic. Why not just make them die? You know? Make it real. And there's always been these things that confused me in this movie. And the first thing starts as soon as the movie begins. See, this scene shows that when the sun comes up in the comic world, all the houses and buildings suddenly erect themselves from being flat. So, does this mean that in the nighttime, the world then goes back to 2D, and then with the next sunrise, goes back to 3D? I mean, this wouldn't be a problem, but the movie's story spans at least two nights in which the characters stay awake inside one of the buildings. So, what happens? Does the 3D interior of the buildings just not become flat while the rest of the outside becomes flat? It just makes me scratch my head. I also feel like the idea of the story is really kind of weird. I've always thought of the Garfield comic as like the undisputed lives of Garfield, John, and Odie. But in this universe, the comic is basically like a play and the characters' real lives are in their house, which is in the comic world. But they're not actors, because the characters all have their exact same personality at home with them than on the comic strip. I don't know if Jim Davis intended this movie to be canon, 
but I do find it to be pretty bizarre. Like, Jim Davis's signature just materializes at the end when the comics are made, so does that mean that Jim Davis's mind is the comic world? And is that where Garfield, John, and Odie actually live and they just go to act out little portions of their lives for the comic strips? I don't know. So, most of the movie takes place more or less inside the comic studio, which is this big building with Odie and Garfield on it. Now, I will admit, there were a few things that I was pleasantly surprised with in the film. The comic studio is one of them because I actually thought that it had some pretty good characters. Particularly the characters who were supposed to have their own comic strips in the paper separate from Garfield's. Their designs are mostly pretty fun to look at and they have some pretty good personality dynamics. I think my favorite two were the little guy and his abusive wife. They actually have some funny banter, especially in this scene where the little guy just is fed up and he tells her off. Why did you name it the Bonita Nator, Walter? Because the blade on the front reminds me of that big honking nose of yours, dear. But then she gets turned on by it. Oh, Wally, you, you are so, so, oh, oh, forceful. <laughs> But, the other characters who are supposed to be workers at the studio, they're super boring. Except for the prop boy, he's kind of fun. They're also hideous. Like, like, ah, oh, how does his, why is his face so smooth but also so lumpy? Ah, like, oh, why does his head look so small but like he doesn't have a neck, but he's also huge and... Oh. Oh my... Oh. What is wrong with her? She's shaped like a peanut, but if it grew the wrong way... I think, though, that in general, one of the biggest problems with the movie is how many characters there are. I mean, there's only an hour and 17 minutes in the movie, and they have like 10 side characters in the comic world, and then 5 more in the real world. That's a lot of character arcs for one direct-to-DVD kids movie. So finally, let's get to the story. Like I said, the movie's really short, so it's gonna be pretty easy to go through this one. Basically, Garfield's sick of doing his comic strip. So he goes through the screen portal into the real world for a vacation, and Odie follows him there. Then the rest of the movie is just them trying to get back into the comic world. And you know, on the subject of Garfield in this movie, he kind of sucks. His voice actor, I think, missed the ball. I think the classic idea of Garfield's voice is this deep and disinterested, lazy voice. Like, his voice in Garfield and Friends is the classic example, and even Bill Murray did a pretty good job. Today we're going to discuss how to be funny. That is not one of the ways. Alright, I'll handle this. I know you don't hear me. But can't you just listen? But in this movie, the voice just kind of sounds like an unending yawn. And that's really hard to detect any emotion in. Oh, hello, little hot dogs. Wow. You know what? This isn't the real world. Reality is where your heart is. Oh, oh no. Oh. 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 oh my! Through most of the movie, Garfield is basically learning that home is where the heart is and that sort of thing. The story itself takes up about 30 minutes of the total movie, and the rest of it is just antics. There's this one running gag about Chihuahuas chasing Odie, 
for this bone he has, and those scenes just go on for way too long. Just those scenes have to pad out at least 15 minutes. Also in those scenes, they tend to focus the camera in on this fat woman's boobs just a little too often, which is not something I thought I'd have to critique in Garfield Gets Real. The other antics involves Garfield eating, which is annoying because in this universe, Garfield will burp after he eats or drinks anything. Here's to my new life. Stick a barbecue sauce in this. Man, that's annoying. The only scene that I felt was any fun to watch at all was the climax, and that's for a few reasons. Number one, there are actual stakes, because Garfield and Odie are in a burning building all tied up, so there's this real mortal threat to the characters. Number two, the situation is really unusual. You have two cats, a dog, two men, and a bear riding out of a burning hotel in a minecart. That's an interesting situation. I always find the weird setups like that to have the most interesting payoffs because it's really hard to predict exactly what'll happen. And number three, it's actually a pretty decent action scene. There's multiple parts to it, the cart moves the scene along and it does so at a pretty decent pace, and the situation keeps changing for the characters. There's some slow-mo parts that can be a little funny, and overall, it's just not bad. And look, I know it's nothing compared to the climax of better movies. Obviously, it's nothing compared to the climax of better movies. But for a direct-to-DVD, 3D animated movie from 2007 about Garfield, I expected a lot less. The movie ends with a dance party, which I hate because it's such a cliché, but I mean, fine, whatever, it's Garfield gets real, at this point, who cares? And that's pretty much it. Kinda like Undercover Grandpa, actually, because it was just kind of forgettable. But unlike Undercover Grandpa, somehow this movie managed to spawn not one, but two more sequels. And I'll be honest, I had those other two movies, and I watched them too, almost as much as I watched this one. And as much as I hate to admit it, re-watching this one was actually a little bit of a nostalgia trip. It's really weird. Maybe it's just because the music is unusually melancholy for a kid's movie, and like my favorite nostalgic music is like that, and it's like slow in a major key and that sort of thing. And you know, like, watching Garfield gets real, it just took me way back. I remember the little room we used to watch it in, and we watched it on this cheap DVD player plugged into this old crappy tube amp, which we got from somewhere, and the carpet was dirty, and the walls were blank, and there were little glow-in-the-dark stars on the ceiling, and I was eating chips, drinking pop, getting fat, and those were the days, man. Those were the days. The days of Garfield. Lasagna. Well, hey, check it out. It's my face again. Go figure. Now, um, I hope you enjoyed going through Garfield Gets Real with me. It was quite a trip, I have to say, revisiting that movie. I don't know if I'll ever do the other two, but what? who knows, you know? 
Um, never mind the base, uh, just holding on to it because it makes me feel comfortable. Um, I just basically, before the end of this, I want to say kind of like the state of the channel and stuff. So, the YouTube videos and things I kind of do, it's just one of many fun things that I do to pass the time. Uh, these days, there's a lot of other stuff that gets in the way of making them. I'm still going to school, so that's five courses at any one time, and I get really busy. Um, and then, in all the f spare time I have, I'm actually in two rock bands now, which are terrible, but um, I'm committed to them, so I, you know, gotta make it the practices and play songs and learn songs and stuff. And um, I might have mentioned this in a video, I'm not sure, but I also um, like making comics. I'm in the middle of making one particularly long one, which I'm very passionate about, but um, I don't often get the time to get into the mindset of making the comics and stuff. So just basically when all is said and done, YouTube videos kind of take a back burner to everything. So uh, you may have noticed this was the first one in a number of months and unfortunately it's probably going to be quite a while before the next ones because I just, I really enjoy making them and it's a great time but I'm always getting sucked up in other things so um, sorry if uh, that's kind of rough but I just want to say the channel isn't dead. I'm probably going to be making videos for this thing until I'm like 60 years old just off and on because when I get the craving to share something uh, you might have noticed I like talking a lot about stuff that I used to watch and do, like kids movies and YTV and stuff. When I want to share my thoughts on those, I really enjoy doing it, but I just have to be in the mindset. Anyways, gonna try not to talk for too much longer because it's already kind of a long video anyways. Um, I hope you people won't leave me. Or if you do, that's fine. Just keep in mind, there will be more Scuba Joffrey and uh, maybe you'll get the bass involved eventually. Okay, see you later.